Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. We give glory, honor, adoration to the King of Kings for making it possible for us to be back again on Ministry Clinic. Ministry Clinic. It's been a while, but we thank God for giving us the grace to come back today. It's because we are busy here and there. It's the work of God. All glory, adoration to the King of Kings. I'd love to welcome my father, my mother, and the Lord, the doctors at the clinic, who is leaving their time out of no time to be able to come to the clinic for today's episode. And I'd love to thank all our viewers out there, all our friends and families that have been giving us a call, asking us what is going on. They've not seen us coming up at the clinic. We thank you greatly. We value you. The Lord will continue to be with you. The Lord will continue to appreciate you in all areas of your life. God bless you all. Today, we are back on our episode 16. The last one that we did was episode 15. And it's still on the same topic that you remember the last one we did. We did say to you that we are coming back because you could not finish it on that particular day. But before we carry on, I just want to implore our sister to please give us opening prayer. Everlasting Father, King of Glory, we thank you. We thank you for your sufficient grace over our life. We thank you for taking us far this year, 2018. We thank you upon this walk, O oh Lord, for how far you have taken us. Mm -hmm. We thank you for every living soul at home listening to this program every time. We thank you for their lives. We thank you for the, their families. We thank you for everything you have done for us, O oh Lord. Father, be thy exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we have come together again according to your word to spread your gospel into the world. Father, Lord, we pray that as your word will be going forth today, that it will fall onto a good ground in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We pray, O oh Lord, unto everyone that will be listening right now, O oh Lord, that you will meet with them at the point of their need, that we will not be the speaker alone, but we will be the doer of your word, and your word will bring forth great increase. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, ma'am. Before we proceed, my sister again, as you know, is a minister Tosi of Kolayo. She's always been part of us at the clinic, coming up at all times when the program is alive. We thank God for that. And I welcome my father to the Lord, Prophet Atonda, for being there at all times. The Lord will continue to be with you. Amen. Amen. And my humble self again, as you remain, Mrs. Fumi or Gati Mary. Amen. God bless you all. So as I was saying in our episode 15, we were tr treating disobedient spirits, disobedient spirits. On that episode, for those of you who joined us as at that time, or maybe you had the opportunity of listening to it through our radio program, because after each program, we always send the link out for those who miss it live to be able to listen and go back to it. Or even if you miss it, you can still go on a YouTube page to be able to still listen or on the Facebook episode 15. It was all about disobedient spirits. But before we carry on, I please want to employ everybody to please sit back, grab your Bible, and follow us in spirit. Invite Holy Spirit today. That's whatever we shall be speaking at the clinic. Let Holy Spirit give you more and deeper interpretation of it so that you can be able to have deeper understanding Amen. of anything that you go to. And I do pray that the Lord, Holy Spirit, we give us that understanding today. Amen. Please do share this. Help us to share it. Help us to invite friends and family so that we can all benefit from the little that we have to bring to life today. Yes. Disobedient spirit. The last time we did as I was saying, we were trying to define what we mean by disobedient spirit. The definition of disobedient spirit. We tried to look at the reasons why people are being disobedient. What are the causes? Why is it that people are being disobedient? We try to look at disobedience to parents, disobedience to spouse, disobedience to friends, disobedience among ourselves. We try to look into all those areas as at that time. But we couldn't finish it. And we said that we are going to come back. We talk about children being disobedient to their parents. We talked about lovers being disobedient to each other. And we gave a lot of references on that episode. So today, we are back again at our episode 16. Still carrying on on disobedient spirits. 
But according to those people that already sent our, um, that thing that we sent out, the notification of this program coming up today, we said we are going deeper into disobedient spirits. Now we want to talk about disobedient to the word of God. The word that is coming out of the Lord. So people that have been disobedient to it. We are saying we are going to talk about that today. We said we are going to talk about being disobedient to the ministers of God. Ministers of God. Men of God. Disobedient to them. And disobedient to God himself. Wow. Disobedient to God himself. And we are going to talk about consequences of being disobedient. The repercussion. The result of your action of being disobedient. So that's where we are going to go deeper today. I'm not too sure if I missed anything from the previous one you want to add to it, sir. Yeah, you? that's what we, we treated at the last episode. Yeah. The other thing that we looked at was uh, disobedience of the children uh, against their parents. Yeah, I did say that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did mention okay. that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so now we are moving on to um, disobedient spirits. Disobedient spirit, disobedient to the word of God. When we say word of God, what do we mean and how can someone be disobedient to the word of God? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, we are all um, knowledgeable in the word of God. Mm. And when we say the word of God is the instruction of God, mm. the pattern, the way the God has said that do this in this way mm. and it shall be prosperous for you. If you walk like this, your days shall be long. Mm. If you do this, we all know then, those are the word of God that needs to be followed diligently, without no subtraction, no addition. But, you know, we tend to do it our own way. That's when the spirit of disobedience comes in. So, to the word of God, disobedient means someone going out of God's pattern, mm. God's direction, to befit his or our own life, or to befit his or our own condition or circumstances. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And um, yes, you've said it right, an instruction from the Lord. Something that God wants you to do or something that God wants to tell you. It might be through the word of God. It might be through somebody. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Lord says someone to you now. Go and tell this person that I said. Mm. In some form of a vision. Mm. Or maybe something that the Lord even spoke to you yourself. Maybe mm. drop it into your heart. Or maybe you dream about it. Or maybe you just had that still, calm voice. voice. Or maybe you even read about it mm. in the Bible. All those are the word of God that you are referring to. But at times, it, 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 it might be maybe the word to shake you or to send you an errand or to, to warn you against something. But people tend to disobey. Why did they disobey to it? Or why is it that they don't want to listen to that kind of word? You want to add anything to it, sir? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, the, 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 the first thing I want us to look at is uh, disobedience is disrespectful to God. Mm. In all ways. Yes. It's as simple as ABC. Mm. When you do not do what God asks you to do, mm. it's a blatant refusal mm. to his word and even to himself, and it's a violation mm. to his law. And God do not like that. So uh, it's a kind of a deliberate act mm. against God's goodness to humankind. When God sends you to do something, when you hear God's voices or when God is leading you into a place where you choose your own way. Mm -hmm. These are the things that we refer to as disobedience. Mm -hmm. And looking at the way people actually disobey God, like uh, Sister Tosi said now that when you refuse to do God's will, when you refuse to do his bidding, mm -hmm. when you refuse to follow his commandment, mm -hmm. then you are being disobedient. To add to that, if you look at John 14, verse 15, it says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Yes, yes. Then if you hate God, then you will not keep that. Mm -hmm. Then that's disobedient. Mm -hmm. That means those who do not love God will not keep it's God's yes. words. Yeah. So in other words, we're saying for every individual with a disobedient spirit, mm. they do not love God. Mm. And again, 
uh, we find out that in Luke 6, 46, it says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do, do what I tell you? Mm -hmm. A large number of people do not do what God asks them to do. Mm -hmm. But yet, they come before God, they pray to God, mm -hmm. they want people to see them as men and women of God, mm -hmm. but yet they are not doing the bidding of God. Mm -hmm. So it's a disobedience to, to God. Mm -hmm. And when you look at... Uh, uh, what the Tarotomy 28 say yeah. mm -hmm. for those who are able to read that we only look at few maybe mm -hmm. with, with time yeah. but when you look at the Tarotomy it says and if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God being careful to do all his commandments that have commanded you today mm -hmm. the Lord your God will set you I mm -hmm. so I, I want us to know that disobedience comes with consequences mm -hmm. and Obedience comes with reward. Mm -hmm. So when you disobey God, there are consequences. When you obey God, there are rewards. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it, go, it goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And these are the things we'll be looking at. Mm -hmm. We look at uh, the disobedience against God and mm -hmm. the consequences. Yeah. Why do people disobey God and what are the consequences of disobeying God? Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. I think because of our time, we, we run them up some mm. together. Disobedience to the word of God, because it's God himself that is speaking. Mm. So you have to be disobedient to God. And then to the men of God, ministers of God, they sit on the same line. Mm. So we just say, okay, let's just look at disobedience generally in those three areas now, mm. and then there are consequences. Why do people disobey? Why do they want to listen? Sometimes, at times, people think it's a bit difficult. Most especially the one that is rampant is when God instructs to go and do something, mm. send you an ass assignment, mm. give you an assignment to do. People at times tend to disobey, maybe because of fear of an unknown. What am I going to meet on that way? Mm. What will people say? What's going to happen? You're, because of your own self interest at times, people mm. might tend to ah, they may not want me. Me. Mm. Who am I? The young out of the tribe of Israel. Mm. I'm the youngest, I'm the least out of them. Why must I do that? But you say something like that is because of love. You they don't love God. If you love God, mm. you wouldn't have to oh, consider all goodness. those things. Mm. You just have to follow it strictly. Because even it happens among husband and wife. There are some things that we don't want to do, but because we love our husband dearly, we mm. get out of our way yeah. to satisfy him, mm. to win him to ourselves. To do. So if you truly love God, all those things that I mentioned, about maybe fear of an unknown, what would they do, this and that, you will forget about them and concentrate to do what God has told you to do. Mm -hmm. And this disobedience, what we see from the beginning, from the time of Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis, it started all the way from the beginning. Mm -hmm. True, to the, there are lots of people who disobey mm -hmm. God or His word or whatever. Even Jonah is a case study, you know. That's another, another terrible one. He disobeyed. Mm. But I don't want to jump to okay. that going far. Let me just pause to that. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, sir. Hallelujah. There are reasons why people actually disobey God. Mm. And uh, some of these reasons why uh, man may go contrary to the will of God. Uh, although some people do not believe in the existence of God, which is number one. So <laughs> if you don't believe in something... Wow. Of course, you're not going to follow, follow his, his, <laughs> his, instruction his or commandment or his instruction. Mm. So a large number of people in today's world that we live in uh, question the existence of God. Mm. And why others that claim that God is... Uh, some people even say God is dead. Wow. And then uh, hmm. some uh, say that God is a silent God who has failed to actually act. do their bidding or act <laughs> at the time of their trial. Mm. So these are the kind of one major reason why people actually disobey, disobey God. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's natural, you know, for people to not obey what they don't see. Yeah. And you remember, for Christians, we believe in faith mm -hmm. of what we don't see. And we, rel we rely so much on, we, we hope in aspiration of a better tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And there is none, none of us that has ever seen God before. Mm -hmm. None of us has ever seen Jesus before. Yes. But we only read the Bible. Mm -hmm. And then we believe. And with faith, we carry on. Mm -hmm. 
But there are few of us who do not actually believe in the existence of God. Or who thought God is dead. And these are the kind of people who deliberately will not listen to God. Hmm. And therefore, they will disobey Him. Hmm. Let's quickly look at 1 Samuel 15. 1 Samuel 15. And see how Saul disobey a clear instruction from God through prophet Samuel. Hmm. Okay. Because sometimes people just will not obey. Even though when God has sent somebody to you, mm -hmm. they will still disobey. So let's look at 1 Samuel 15, mm -hmm. 1 to 3. Yes. Samuel also said unto Saul, Yes. The Lord sent me to anoint thee mm. to be king over his people. Mm. Over Israel. Mm. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Mm. Mm. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, mm. how he laid wait for him in the way mm. when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek mm. and utterly destroy mm. all that they have mm. and spare them not, mm. but slay both man and woman, mm. infants. And sucklings, mm. ox and sheep, mm. camel and axes. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Saul so do not listen to the God's commandment. Mm -hmm. He waited again and waited again for God to give that instruction again, as it happens to so many people today, especially so many men of God and even so many Christians and those people around us. God will say, Go this way. Or sometimes God will send his messengers, his prophets, the people around them. It could be, it could be true, even the youngest one in the, in the family, mm. that God is going to speak for the family. Mm. But would they listen? No. Let's look at verse 12 of, I mean, chapter 12, verse 29 of, that, of the same uh, chapter. 1 Samuel 12, 29. 1 Samuel 12, 4 Samuel 12, 29. 20. What's the last one? Let's see the last one. 23. What does the last one say? Only fear the Lord. Only fear the Lord. And serve him in truth. And serve him in truth. With all your heart. Yes. But consider how great things he has done for you. Okay. It is only those who are willing to serve God with fear. Mm. Which is another thing that is leading me to the point number two. Fear. Some people fear what the consequences is going to be rather than to fear this the god instruction sure. itself but they fear the consequences mm. uh, the my people used to say some things that uh, you fear is it the messenger you fear or mm. you fear the people that send the messenger mm -hmm. something like that but people do not fear god as That's the right. bible yeah. has said but rather they, they fear the instruction itself go this way they are afraid of going there, as it happened to, to Jonah, mm -hmm. as it happened to the Israelites mm -hmm. when they were sent to go to just go and look at uh, the place uh, that, that God already mm -hmm. given them. Mm -hmm. But they came back with a terrible report mm -hmm. that, that that caused them a lot of uh, uh, problems. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is number two, fear, fear of the unknown, as you said, man, mm -hmm. is usually man's greatest enemy. Mm -hmm. So man failed to try or to persist in his belief because of fear. Mm -hmm. So in the Bible first, Saul claimed he disobeyed God because he was afraid of the mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And that was why he refused to obey. Mm -hmm. Not because he doesn't know God exists, mm -hmm. but because he was afraid of the people. So that is to say that Saul was afraid mm -hmm. of the people instead of God. Mm -hmm. And the Bible oh, first we read says we should fear God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not and human. Not God already delivered that people to you. He said, go ye. <laughs> why, why are you waiting? Why are you waiting? Why do you question God's uh, 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 existence? Why do you question God's ability? Why do you question God's uh, uh, power mm -hmm. to subdue those people he already gave, gave you? Mm -hmm. Then number, number three is mm -hmm. listening to others. Mm -hmm. So just as Saul listened to the people, so it is that... Uh, so, so many times people listen to others and then they disobey God. So when we listen to the voice of man instead of the voice of God, so people will always want us to do some things 
that favor them, not what pleases God. Mm. And therefore, what we do today, it, it, it is happening in churches, mm -hmm. that the preaching people want to listen to is what people are saying. Mm -hmm. When God gave them certain instructions, say this, do this, they will refuse blatantly because they are listening to people. Mm -hmm. Go to some churches and preach the word of God the way it's supposed to, to, to be. Mm -hmm. you, they will never invite you again. <laughs> that might be the last day they will invite mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Because they will, sometimes they will even tell you, this is what we want. This is how we want it. These are these people. Our people are this. Because they are already indirectly telling you what to say mm -hmm. and how to say it. Mm -hmm. when, in, when God already given you an instruction. Mm -hmm. So people sometimes listen to, to, to other, other people's, people's voice, voice. Mm -hmm. then impatient. Mm -hmm. Many Christians disobey God because they are not patient enough to wait for God appointed time. Mm -hmm. This was the, the, the case in 1 Samuel 13, 7 to 10, when Saul offered the peace yeah. offering because Samuel did not come Almost at the expected time. time. Can we quickly look at that? 1 for Samuel 7. 13. Mm -hmm. 7 to 10, please. Impatient. For Samuel 13. Yes. 7 to 10. Yes, please. And some of the Hebrews yeah. west went over Jordan mm. to the land of God mm. and Gilead. Mm. As for Saul, oh, yes. he was yet in Gilgal. Mm. And all the people followed him trembling. Mm. And he tarried seven days, oh, yes. according to the set time mm. that Samuel had appointed. Mm. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, mm. and the people were scattered from him. Mm. And Saul said, Bring either a bond offering to me, mm. to me, and peace offering. And mm. he offered the bond offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering, mm. the bond offering, behold, Samuel came, and so as Saul went to meet him, that he might salute him. Hallelujah. Amen. So Saul was impatient. Mm -hmm. And uh, God is telling us that your time is your time. Mm -hmm. But people disobey and do otherwise, rather than to wait for God's time. Mm -hmm. So impatient is another, another point. Mm -hmm. If we look at uh, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, he says, for I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord. Yes. It's a plan of a better future. Mm -hmm. Not to kill you, mm -hmm. not to, to, to make you to suffer, but because people are not patient, mm -hmm. if they find it difficult to actually wait for God's appointed time. Mm -hmm. um, another reason why people uh, disobey God is unbelief. Mm -hmm. Religious men and men and women Disobey God when they no longer believe in God. <laughs> so many times when people lost their hope in God, mm. then they disobey. What voice do they want to listen to again? Mm. When they already lost the trust in God. When they don't actually believe that God can do it. When they already felt that God is quiet or they felt God is no longer there for them. Mm. So therefore, they, 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 they become as unbeliever and any instruction that come either from God or from the word of God or from the men of God they will not listen to that so this is another reason why people actually uh, do not uh, obey God can we look at Proverbs 3 and see what the Bible says because these are the people who do not actually trust God any longer the Bible says, trust in the Lord with mm -hmm. all your hearts and not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all their heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not unto their own lean understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. In all ways acknowledge him. Yes. And he shall direct the path. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, they do not believe again in God. But the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all mm -hmm. your heart. Whatever the circumstances you find yourself, mm. the Bible says, lean unto God, not yes, unto your own understanding, mm. because He is God. He already knew you before you were born, and He ordered your steps. So He knows where you are going even before you get there. Mm -hmm. 
And God is always with you. And if God is there, even before you were conceived, He said He know your name, even before your parents gave you that name. So this is God that we said is omniscient, omnipotent, is everywhere. Is God in all? What situation will come to us that we will now become unbeliever? I pray such a situation will not be our portion in Jesus' name. So a large number of people experience a situation that turned them away from God. Mm. And because they are, they, are, they, are, they are being turned away from God, then they do not love God again. Mm. And if you do not love God again, that means you hate God. Mm. If you don't love God, you will not follow His commandment. Mm. It's as simple as that. Mm. Um, another point is uh, the love of the company of man. Mm. Uh, in First Samuel 13 that we read, Saul decided to offer the peace offering because his people were scattered. This is to say that he was abandoned. He thought he was abandoned. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he needed to bring the people mm -hmm. together. Therefore, there are times we disobey God just because we want the company of men. We want to please others. We want uh, the company of men instead of the company of God. We want to please men instead of pleasing God. We want to satisfy men instead of satisfying God. Mm -hmm. And therefore... We disobey God. Um, another one is anger. So it's obvious that we can disobey God out of anger, especially when we fail to control our anger. I will give a brief uh, uh, example of what happened in this country of somebody I know. <laughs> During the terrorist attack, a guy lost a leg. And because of that, he will not serve God again. Anger of what has happened. Sometimes people pray, and you know when you pray in season or out of season, sometimes the prayer may not be answered. Mm. Then people become angry. And as a result of that, they say, if you don't do this to me, they talk to God as if they're talking to their friend. They're talking to God as if they're talking to their father. If you don't give me this, then I will not do that. Mm. If you don't make this to come to pass, then I will not do this. Anger. <laughs> So, as a result of this, they disobey God. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, desire to hold on to power. Mm -hmm. The desire to hold on to power has led men to disobey God. Uh, we see that a lot of people today are selfish. Mm -hmm. Many men of God, you see, they, 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 they do things in their own way, not in God's way. Mm -hmm. So, outrightly, they are already disobeying God. Mm -hmm. They are pleasing people because of their own selfish interest, because of their material gains, the, because of the material gains they are going to get, not because of the spiritual development, mm -hmm. not because they love God. Mm -hmm. And then that greed, that leads to greed, mm -hmm. that leads to selfishness. Mm -hmm. And because of all this, people disobey God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. God. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. We are back home. Our Father just gave us Eight good reasons. I'm not sure if you are following us. Eight good reasons why people disobey God, disobey the word of God, or even ministers of God. Wow, those are very powerful. Reason number one, fear of the consequences. That if I obey, if I do it the way God said I should do it, oh, God told me to go and tell the queen this, that, 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 that. Ah, how do I get to the queen? Even if I get to the queen, will I not be arrested for, say, for doing that? You are now being scared of being arrested. But you didn't fear God who created the queen. Mm. You are being scared to go and deliver that message to the leader of your church. Because the leader of your church, what will they say? What will they say? They can say this, they can say that. You are being scared of that, the consequence of you delivering that message. Mm. You are scared of the leader of your church, but the creator of the leader of your church, you are, you are not scared about that person. So we have to be very, very careful. Fear, uh, fear us at home. Number two is that listening to other people's voice mm. rather than the voice of That's God so himself. Yeah. You've done this in the past. That job that you want to apply for, you already applied for that job in the mm. past. You weren't shortlisted. You weren't even called for interview. Because of that, now they put up application again. You told your friend, ah, don't bother yourself. Those people are time wasters. You don't know whether if you apply now, you are going to be given that job. 
But you now the voice of God is telling you you are you had that dream, you mm. saw that company, you know that you are even working there as a manager in your dream. God spoke to you already. But because your friend told you, oh, don't waste your time. The, the, the time wasters. You dump it. You don't want to do it. That means to disobey the word of God. This, that means to disobey what God has already told you to do. You are not doing it. And then, majority of people, they said they don't believe in the assistance of God. Mm. They don't even trust. Some people even say that God is dead. Maybe because of what you are praying for. It's taking so long for it to be answered. And for that reason, anything that God says you should do now, maybe somebody comes to you, give you a vision that go and do three days fasting and prayer. Oh, I fasted a lot in the past. What did I get from it? For that reason, you don't want to do it. You don't know maybe when you don't do this fasting and prayer that you have been told to do, maybe that is where that door that has been knocking wants to be opened. But because you don't trust him anymore, you don't believe in him, you just want to dump it. I love the particular one that my father said, because of the love of company of men, some people tend to disobey. I have a scenario that I want to tell you via Sparkle. There was a case in a particular church one day. There was a little argument and one of them slapped each other. The close friend to the one who slapped, they were being summoned, disciplinary committee summoned them to come and then tender their case. You know? And then the one who witnessed it said the truth that her best friend was the one who slapped. After that day, the best friend who slapped the other party now said he would just want to be friend with the one who witnessed saying the truth. He said, uh-uh. After all, you that are called my best friend. Mm. Even if I kill somebody, if I close the door and kill somebody in the door, I trust you to say that I didn't do it. Why must you go and testify against me? <laughs> After all, I call you my best friend. Now, Vias back home. If that best friend wants to follow the company of her friend, not to lose that friendship, friendship. on that day, the friend will have lied. And what does the word of the Lord say? Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not be a false witness, says the word of the Lord. So if that friend wants to follow the company of her friend, not to be able to lose that friendship mm. on that day, mm. she too will have, you know, give false witness, mm. lying that the person they slapped is the one who slapped first. And mm. that wasn't true. So viewers, are you one of those that always follow the company of friends to cause you to disobey God or what God is saying? Our father told us about impatience, one of the reasons why people tend to disobey God. Because you cannot wait for the appointed time. Mm. Habakkuk to what does he say? He says the vision is for an appointed time. Absolutely. Yes. In that passage, if I'm able to read it, there are stages in that passage. We always read it. Mm. Vision is for an appointed time. Make it play. Write it on the mm. table. Wait. Wait. It will surely come. Mm. Do it, tarry. It mm. will it surely, surely come. come. Remember. Has an appointed time. Write it. That is, make it simple. Let people be able to understand to read it. So that anybody that is reading it will be able to understand what you have in mind. Yes? Mm. Run with it. Take action. That you are running is taking an action. Now, why do we become so impatient to the extent that you want to jump before that time? That's why you want to go and cut corners and disobey mm. the word of God. Mm. Ministers are home. Via our home. Many of us, we have a ministry just as you are having ministry clinic. Many of you, you have one thing or the other that you are doing. Or you see a business that you just opened that is not successful. It's not booming as you expect. And because of that, you don't want to do it in the way of the Lord. You want to go and cut corners to be able to make it to be successful and booming. Or you see a church that you established, started a church. If it's the call of God upon your life to start that ministry. Because you don't have many members, you want to go and cut corners. You don't want to wait. It says, wait, don't let impatience push you to the extent of disobeying God or disobeying God's word. Always remember that book of Habakkuk, chapter 2. Believe, unbelief. Our father mentioned about unbelief, people of God. And he made reference to Proverbs 3. I'm just recapping on all what our father said regarding the reasons why people have been disobedient to either the word of God, ministers of God, or God himself. Let us be very, very careful. If you believe and have faith, you will be able to do it the way the Lord wants you to do it. You do it in the way of God and leave the rest for God to undo. Don't try and do it in your own wisdom or your knowledge. He said, faithful is he that promises. 
You will be saying, oh, look at the way she's talking. Maybe she has never experienced it. When I teach you about the balloon prayer, not only. Sorry, excuse my language. Meaning those that have never experienced it is the one they said that they are strong. Yes, I have what I'm passing through, but I'm self saying it to you that faithful is he that has promised. Let us hold on to that faith. And then hunger. Oh, you told me to jump. I jumped so many times. God, what's the result of that jumping? Oh, because of that, I'm really upset. He says, woe unto that person who is fighting with his destiny. Only a benefit Do not fight with your creator. Don't let anger push you to the extent of disobeying what God wants you to do. And the final one my father mentioned about the eighth reason is desire to hold on to that seat. You want to hold on to that position. You want to be there by fire by force and it's not going right it's not now you want to compromise mm. Mm. you want to compromise you want to find a way around it you don't want to hit it on the net anymore so let us be careful fears at home let us be very very careful meditate on all these things and let us try do you want to have anything my sister yeah praise the lord and it's, 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 a, it's a point of encouragement for mm -hmm. us because the, our father and the lord have said so many things mm -hmm. and we don't need to make repetition i think um one of the reasons as well that we encourage people at home to pass on is passing the fear of god to the next generation mm -hmm. you know when we pass the fear of god instill it into the heart of new i won't i wouldn't say it as a parent now i would say it new believers babies in christ that are just coming like newborn again mm. when we put the fear of god when we tell them what god is who god is letting them understand the word of god properly they will grow to fear the lord and when you fear the lord when you love god and fear him it will make it easier for you to obey him mm. just going to read the book of judges Judges chapter, uh, Judges chapter 2, mm. verse 11. It's about the children of Israel. Mm. And uh, you know, uh, children of the Israel, they disobeyed God in so many ways. Mm. But I will start from verse 11. It said, and the children of Israel, mm. no, sorry, uh, from verse, because I want to read the ones, verse 10. Okay. Right. <clears throat> 2, 10. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose another generation after them. That is another generation after the first mm. children of Israel, mm. which knew not Lord. Mm. So why would another generation arose after the children of Israel that they know God and they don't know God? So this second generation did not know God. And when they didn't know God, mm. they don't know the works of God that he has done to the children of Israel. Mm. Their father didn't tell them what God has done. Mm. Their, gener their first generation did not beget into their life mm. how powerful God is. Mm. And in verse 11, what they did. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord mm -hmm. and served Bali. Mm. God has told them, do not have any other God except mm. me. That was the commandment of God. You know, the first generation took this commandment from God. Mm. But in their own negligence, they forgot to pass this instruction to their generation. Mm. And through that, these people, the second generation, disobeyed God mm. by having another God, which God has actually told them not to have. Mm. And it caused so many things. You know, when we read on in verse 14, it says, mm. the anger of the Lord was hot against them. So when we don't pass on the fear of God, mm. the instruction of God mm. to the people, to newborn again, mm. to let the people of the church understand how powerful and I call him a terrible God, mm. how terrible God is, as so much as he loves us, how he can deal with us. Mm. People tend to take him with a levity hand mm. Mm. and they will say, oh, you know what? It's God now. Like Daddy said in the first point, he said, some people, they know he's his, but they don't believe in him. So most Christians come to church, they know God is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they don't believe in his work. They don't know how powerful he is. Mm -hmm. So they don't bother following his instruction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they don't know the repercussion of what they are doing. So I would advise that our fathers and the Lord, mothers and the Lord, people that have grown spiritually, 
make sure that they lead the people, the new people, mm. the newborn against the babies mm. in Christ mm. in the right way of God mm. and build their faith, the fear of God in them. Mm. It will increase obedience to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If, if I can just add to what uh, Sister Tosi said mm. there, uh, I want to put it in another perspective. Okay. Uh, because uh, we all know that there are so many temptations out there mm. waiting to lead us away from God. God. Yeah. And when temptation leads to disobedience, mm. there are a lot of things that actually happen to, to people. Can we quickly look at James 1? James 1, 14 to 15. James 1. Yes. Because sometimes temptation of, uh, and desire mm. 14 to 15. make the, the, the children of Israel that we read about to forget about God. Mm. To forget about their father's ways mm. and choose their own way, mm -hmm. choose their own God. Yes. 14. Mm -hmm. yeah, 14. 1 verse 14. Mm -hmm. 14 to 15, please. But every man is tempted. Every man is tempted, yes. When he is drawn away yes. of his own lust yes. and enticed. Yes. Then when lust has conceived, mm -hmm. it bringeth forth sin. Mm -hmm. And sin, when it is finished, mm -hmm. bringeth forth death. Mm -hmm. So people are tempted. We know what is happening in today's generation. We know what is happening in the country where we live in. We know there is a lot of temptation out there. There are times when people actually need to listen to God or to go to church mm -hmm. when they are glued to their Facebook mm -hmm. or they are glued to their TV or they are glued to their Instagram or watching the Nollywood or mm -hmm. Hollywood or Bollywood or whatever wood they, they, they have in their house. They, they, we live in a country where mm -hmm. there is electricity 24 hours mm -hmm. you choose and pick when you want to watch what you like and if you are not conscious you'll be carried away with this desire mm -hmm. you the, the temptation is so huge mm -hmm. that serving God I used to say to people mm -hmm. that serving God is so difficult in this country mm -hmm. reading the Bible is so difficult in this in this country than looking at your Facebook. Mm -hmm. Some people, the Facebook is 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Is I, I don't even know how to describe their Facebook to them, or the WhatsApp, because the phone is by their side 24 seven. They will look at the Facebook rather than looking at mm -hmm. the Bible. Mm -hmm. They will look at the WhatsApp rather than attending to their children. Mm -hmm. And then they will go into Instagram, the time they even have to, to, to eat. We, we, we see the war on the social media today. Mm -hmm. And we see how many followers that we have. Mm. So there is a lot of temptation that is drawing people away from God. Mm. And this is one major reason why people actually disobey God. Mm. So this temptation is standing against God. God. Mm. And men, if care is not taken, we are driven. Oh, we are yeah. driven. Yes. Each day we are driven away. Mm. And when we disobey God, we are against him. Yes. He asks us, through his commandment, Jesus' teaching, to follow his way. When we disobey God, there are usually consequences, like I said. But like I said in John 14, 15, if you love me, you keep, keep my commandments. commandments. Yes. And then uh, uh, Romans 3, 23 is saying that for everyone are sin, we're all short, short of, of glory. God's no. glory. Yeah. Yet we are all sinners. Mm -hmm. But every little time we have the opportunity to read the Bible, to pray, or to go into the sanctuary, to pray together, to ask for forgiveness, let us do it rather than a selfish desire that uh, uh, is there, is out there. The temptation of uh, uh, 24 hours work. You finish your shift early in the morning on a Sunday that you're supposed to go to church. You have been called again to do an extra hour. Quickly, you've taken that. Mm -hmm. So people are not conscious about telling their employer, please, on a Sunday, I serve my God. And then they will take into, to, into consideration. For every job that I've done, I've always been telling them that I will always finish 4 p.m. on a Wednesday, and on Sunday I don't work. Because I know 
my time for God is for those two, two days. Mm -hmm. But people will just go there, take the work, Sunday, they're working, and then they're calling you, oh, Daddy, I'm sorry, I'm at work. Mm -hmm. Monday, first month, second month, third month, fourth month, and you are away from God for five, six months. Mm -hmm. Temptation. Wow. That's then, true. what do we talk about disobedience? You are already away from God, okay. so it's easier to it's disobey. Easy. Disobey. Very easy. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, when my sister was talking about passing the fear of God to the next generation, something just dropped into my heart, which is in the book of Second uh, Timothy chapter 1. Mm. You know, for, for that Second Timothy chapter 1, we saw Paul mm. trying to encourage oh, Timothy. Paul is the spiritual father to uh, and, uh, Timothy. Yeah. In the encouragement that he was trying to encourage Timothy, he made reference to um, Louise, the grandmother oh. of Timothy. Yeah. Eunice is the mother. Louis is the grandmother, mm -hmm. but we're able to see the impact of Louis in the life of Timothy. Yeah. Viewers back home, what impact? How are you passing this faith to your children, not to even talk about the next generation? How am I passing this faith to my own children, not to even talk about the future generation, those yet unborn? Mm -hmm. Let us find time to go and read that book of, do that book of Second Timothy, the impact of the grandmother of Timothy in the life of Timothy, the mother of Eunice, the mother of uh, Timothy. The Lord will teach us to be able to do it right. Amen. So we are, because of our time, we are going to move quickly. We've already seen, because we've done this in the last episode, we've seen a lot, we've heard a lot about this being disobedient spirit to this, to that, among ourselves, among others. Now we want to move swiftly to the consequences of being disobedient, the result of being disobedient. And what can we do for us to, to uh, try to manage it, even if we want to disobey that spirit, want to come on us? How do we conquer that terrible spirit? So, what are the consequences of being disobedient? Praise the Lord. Alleluia. We all know the consequences of especially disobedient to God, because it's a heart of rebellion. Hmm. So, it, when when you rebel against God. You know, it's, it, the Bible says that it's, it's even better, yeah, not to fall in the hand of, of God. Mm -hmm. When someone falls in the hand of God, sometimes God can be merciful, but sometimes it can be, it, it can be a fire that can destroy. Mm -hmm. as, and as we have read in the case of those children of Israel, it said the anger of the Lord was us. us. He used the word us. us. Mm -hmm. Who can bear us? Mm -hmm. he, he didn't even say that the, the anger of God rose against them. Mm -hmm. But when something is off, it's very terrible. Mm -hmm. So definitely, I, I, I will encourage us not even to fall and disobey God. Mm -hmm. And that is why we, we tend to take it with a levity hand. Because when we do, when we do disobey either even the men of God or our instruction by someone that was sent to you is directly disobeying God. Mm -hmm. So even when we say we disobey men of God, or ministers of God, or someone that is being sent to you, if truly God has sent them to you, is a direct disobedience to God. Mm. So it doesn't matter if he's a minister, mm. and that is why so many people's life is um, is, is a, in a in a kind of confusion, and they run from this post to pillar, and they jump to conclude. Oh, I have like Daddy said, like anger, it tends to anger. So, because sometimes when we pray and pray and pray and nothing happens, we need to go back and check that. What am I actually doing? It might just be an act of disobedience. Maybe that is why the anger of God has risen against you. And sometimes it might be greed. Like the case of Giasi. It might be a prepared plan. The reason why people disobey is so many. You know? It might be for... That they have listed so many things. But to some, it's a, a kind of pre-planned mm -hmm. issue that make them, actually making them to disobey. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, he knows what he wanted. Mm -hmm. He knows how to get it. Mm -hmm. But he's actually all the way pretending mm -hmm. to be in God's track. Why is not? Mm -hmm. So, the consequences is so bad that if we go to the Bible, we have so many, like, example. Look at Judas. Mm -hmm. When we disobey God, it's the act of betrayer. Mm -hmm. So disobedience is betrayal, is rebellion, and what happens to them? God can utterly wipe them off. 
Absolutely. He can utterly say, you know what? It doesn't cost him mm. to raise, to create, wipe the whole act of God forbid and raise another people. So disobedience to God in my simple consequences mm. is the hot anger of God. May the Lord not have anger over yes. us in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. No wonder it says the wages of sin is death. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mention that it's wipe a straight like wow. God should just have mercy. Mm. And that is why we, we take him with levity and now because it's actually God Jesus has intervened for us. Mm. So he's making people think, Oh, I can still do it. I can still do it. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Just like uh, sister mm. said, sometimes human don't re human beings do not reflect on past effects mm -hmm. or past history, history. Mm -hmm. or what we read in the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We actually forget that there have been greater empires in the past. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of empires in Africans that are no more today. Mm. We have a lot of empires in the ancient mm. uh, empires like the Persians empires, mm. the Babylonian, the Greek, the Roman, the British, and so many empires. But what happened to this, some of these empires mm. that we are talking about? Some of them are no more today. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Why? God wiped them off because of their sin. And one major sin is a disobedience to God's word. Mm. So it is arrogantly doing what God says not to do. Mm -hmm. Then when God keeps warning, sending his prophet and humans, don't, they don't pay attention. attention. Then we rouse his anger. Mm. When God says, do this, you refuse to do that, he sends his uh, prophets to tell you, you refuse to do that. He sent a lot of people to, to send the warning, yet yes. you do not follow that. Mm. That will arouse his anger. Mm. Then the drastic consequences of sin emerge. Mm. And sometimes it becomes extremely fatter mm. than what we can bear. Then the empire falls. But let us know that even when some empire falls, some are rising. That's right. mm -hmm. And that's God for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When some people who disobey him are going down, he's raising up some other people that will obey him. Mm -hmm. So that's God. Mm -hmm. So if you are stubborn and you, you, you think you are, you are strong-headed and you're not going to listen to God and you're going to go away from God, you're not going to do his will, he will abandon you mm -hmm. and he will raise others. Mm -hmm that we listen to him, mm -hmm. that we obey him. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's hand in hand. The consequences of disobedience mm -hmm. is so far more mm -hmm. that we just need mm -hmm. to obey so we can get the reward. Mm -hmm. When we disobey uh, 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 God, mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're, we become a rebel mm -hmm. against him. It's a rebellious act against God, which God actually term as sinful, mm. because that's yeah, violation mm. to his doing, his yes. law, mm -hmm. his existence, everything that has to do with God is a violation to God. Mm. And then, as we've seen in the Bible, when people actually disobey like Adam and Eve, as we saw, the consequences is greater. Mm. See what happened to Adam and Eve. See what led them into see what we have today see the generation upon generation and the cause is still there it's the the, the effect of the painful uh, uh, experience we are going through in our life the situation we find ourselves the circumstances we are going through today it was as a result of what actually happened in the past mm. and God God caused them mm. can we look at first John 3 4 quickly because of our time please mm. Yeah, yeah, first five, John three four. <laughs> first John three four. Three verse four. And it says, Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Mm. So when we disobey, we transgress against God's law. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, when we look at Deuteronomy 9 7 and Joshua 1 8. They also talk about sin is based entirely on plain disobedience mm. or rebellion against God. Mm. And when we continue to do this, it doesn't, it doesn't lead us to anywhere. Mm -hmm. Rather, it's taking so much from, 
from oh. us. Mm -hmm. Because disobedience is very consequential by nature. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, it end up, it ends up costing people far more than they, 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 they've ever thought about. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, 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 the consequences is so much <laughs> that I don't even know because of our time yes. whether I should go on or <laughs> should give you time <laughs> to round up because we only have about three more minutes to go. <laughs> yeah, we're to rush on it. <laughs> but what I just want people to hold on to again about these consequences then, when it happens like that, the sin of one person, your act of being disobedient can affect others. Absolutely. Look at the case of Jonah. Mm. When he was in that ship, he was not the only one that was being affected. Mm. He affected all that were around him. Mm. So your being disobedient can affect your family. Absolutely. Can affect even members of your church mm. at your workplace. That's why we need to be very, very, very careful. Can you just give us an idea of what we think that we can do in just two minutes before you can go? What do you think you can do to help us from moving away from this disobedient spirit? Thank you. Uh, I just want us to use Galatians 6, 7, okay. just to round up, which okay. says, Do not be deceived. Mm. God cannot be mocked. Mm. A man reap what he sows. Mm. Life is a matter of reaping what you sow. Mm. So sometimes we reap far more than we, we actually sow when we do good. When you are good to God, when you obey God, the reward is even far more. Mm. But when you disobey God, the consequences is also there. So I just want to say to all our viewers and our listeners that let us try and strive as hard as we can against all odds to obey God. Because in obedience, then our salvation lies in. Mm. Thank Hallelujah. you. Thank you very much. God bless you. That's it. We are back home. We are saying that in all situations, whether convenient or not convenient, all we just have to do is to obey God. In doing that, that's a great reward. If I'm trying to please other or for any reason you want to disobey, there's no reward in it. And even those that you are trying to please, that you are stripping away, disobeying God to please them, there's nothing they can do unto you. Mm. The best they can do to somebody told us in one of the seminars that we attended the last time, and somebody was saying that, People of this world, they can give you an award. Mm. But God, the King of Kings, will give you reward. The reward. And Hallelujah. when the Lord gives you reward, Hallelujah. you know yes. what that means. That award is just vanity upon vanity. Absolutely. That is the best the people of this world can give you. So why must you, because of what you want to get from others, try to disobey the one who can give you the best reward? Mm. I pray that the Spirit for us to do it right, the spirit for us to meditate on that book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 that our Father has given unto us, that Lord will give it unto us. Amen. And we, from now on, we will learn to disobey God more. From now on, we will tend to, to, I mean, to obey God more. Amen. Sorry. From now on, we learn to obey Amen. God more. From now on, we will learn to be able to fear God more than all those consequences. Amen. More than that, those all results of what we are going to get when we obey God. Amen. You obey him first. Try him. Test him. And God. see Amen. that he's a good God. Amen. So as at this time from ministry clinic, because we are not going to come back until next year now, we are in the mood of Christmas already. I'm sure you two you are doing shopping. We want to go and do our own shopping going up and down. It's, it's festive period. <laughs> yeah. So from the ministry clinic, we are saying to all our viewers out there, our friends and family out there, that Merry Christmas. Let's say Merry Christmas today. We Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. To you. <laughs> yes. And Happy, and happy New, New Year, year in, advance. in advance. God bless you. God bless. Enjoy Thank your you. Christmas. Till next year again. Bye. Bye.